Railroad workers and railroad corporations are now in the midst of a fierce contract negotiation. And a board that was appointed by President Joe Biden has actually just sided with the corporations. I mean, aren't, isn't that shocking? Now, this is a story that we're updating you on. 2IT had covered um, the initial reports on this. But just to give you a refresher before we get to the latest news, uh, the railroad workers have been without a contract for almost three years. Three years, no contract. And you know what that means? That means that they have not gotten a pay increase. And that's a big problem, especially when you consider the inflation that we're experiencing right now. Um, and that's pushing workers to quit because they're like, I, I can't make do with the money I'm getting paid for this work. And I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done. So some of these workers quit. Um, and the ones that remain end up working punishing hours. In some ways, they're on call on their days off. And it's just been a complete and utter disaster. The conditions aren't good, the pay isn't good. And so last uh, last year, I'm sorry, last month, last month, the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers and Trainmen voted 99% nearly unanimous in favor of going on strike. And the day before the union was uh, legally able to strike, the White House got involved. Biden stepped in and he created what's referred to as a presidential emergency board or PEB, okay? And he did this by executive order, which prevented the unions from being able to go on strike. And so the uh, it, it prevents them from going on strike for at least 30 days. And understand why he did that, okay? If the railroad workers go on strike, any supply chain issues that we've already experienced will be exacerbated considerably. And that puts the White House in panic, puts the corporations in panic. This is why organized labor is a powerful thing. But unfortunately, Biden decided to step in and prevent them from legally striking for 30 days, okay? So even more context, you might be wondering, well, does Biden even have the executive authority to do that? He absolutely does. The authority to create a presidential emergency board was established in the Railway Labor Act of 1926. So Biden's executive order is not without precedent, okay? But here's here's my argument, Waz. Instead of preventing them from striking, how about you apply pressure to the corporations that are doing real well to share that revenue? You know, just just pay the workers, please just pay the workers. And they just won't do it, right? So now we're in this disastrous situation where the workers are unable to strike legally and the negotiations have not been going well. So let's get let's get to what we know from the latest round of negotiations. Number one, profits for these railroad companies on the rise. Let's take a look at this graph by using Bloomberg intelligence, it was put together by the Washington Post. It shows that the average profit margin for the top five US railroads has more than doubled. So they're doing well and they could share that wealth with the workers, but they're refusing to do it. So yesterday, Biden's PEB released its recommendations for a new contract. Okay, so this is the group that Biden put together, okay, this isn't even the corporation that's making the uh, proposal. The PEB report proposes a 22% cumulative pay increase over five years, retroactive to 2020. The proposal, which works out to an average 4.4% wage increase per year, is little more than half, half the current rate of inflation of 8.5%, entailing a major cut in real pay. That's what they came up with. We're gonna give you a raise, but it's not gonna be enough to even mitigate inflation. <clears throat> so it's it's not a it's not a raise. It's still a pay cut when you consider inflation. It's just a disaster. Even worse, the PEB did not recommend any changes to the punishing attendance policies that railroad railroad companies have implemented. I'll get to those details in a moment, but first, Waz, I want to give you an opportunity to jump in. I mean, <laughs> You pretty much said everything there is to say here. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, tough talk. I think I was even on the show when Biden did his tough talk to Amazon, and we're unionizing and we're coming for you and blah blah blah. A lot of lip service 
paid um, to the labor movement in the country, in this country, a uh, putrid as it already is. And so, you know, to see him do this and just basically punch the working man in the face is just disgusting. And you know, symbolically, I'm not one who cares about symbolism too much, but like. <laughs> The reason why a labor movement was even started was because of the freaking railroads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like just the punishing conditions, the amount of people who literally died laying down the railroads in this country, right? Like the, the conditions were so just unacceptable and inhumane. Like th th this is the, the industry that galvanized a labor movement in this country. And so to see Joe Biden, you know, a hundred something years later, just be a complete corporate flack and hack, uh, it, it's quite disgusting. And again, Anna, you, you it, it's beautiful that you said it was like, this is just Joe Biden executive order. He didn't need to go whip up no votes in Congress. This is just by fiat, he could do this. And what he chooses to do with this power is to just punch these, these workers in the nose, which is just shameful and awful. You know, and I can't help but think about how he is very much willing to flex his executive muscle when it comes to preventing workers from striking. But when it comes to other executive privileges, like the ability to, with the stroke of a pen, cancel student loan debt, it would take no effort, really. He pretends like he doesn't know whether he has the ability to do that through an executive order. He absolutely does. These are federal government loans. And the education secretary, with Biden's blessing, can cancel the debt. I mean, it's, it's such a layup, that's the thing that I don't get. So many easy things that Biden could do, like canceling the debt is one thing. Uh, taking marijuana off the schedule one drug list is another thing he could do. Easy, layups, layup after layup, but he just, he misses every time. So I want, I want to give the workers a voice here. Uh, let's start with one of the railroad workers from Virginia who says, I work it for Nor Norfolk Southern. Uh, we have a long pool in which the conductors get no set days off. They leave their home terminal and can spend up to 36 hours or more in a hotel waiting for their next train. And I don't know for sure, but I would venture to say that as they're waiting for that next train in a hotel when they would probably much rather be at home, they're not getting paid for those hours. I, I'm not sure, I'm just suspecting that that's the case. Um, he continues to say, or she, I'm, I'm unsure because this person uh, gave the quote anonymously. Often that will be their day off. So they're like on call or waiting for their next job on their day off in a hotel waiting on their train back home. When they get back home to their home terminal, they're often back to work after their 10 hour mandatory rest period, depending on how quick the pool is turning. Here's another worker from Texas. I was forced to take stimulants to stay awake and sleeping pills to sleep. Then more stimulants to wake up from the pills I took to go to sleep. It got to where I couldn't sleep at all. Then I would fall asleep for way too long and couldn't wake up. I literally felt like I was going crazy. I mean, the, the torture that these workers are going through both physically and mentally is insane. And again, to see Biden taint the one thing that I, I felt the need to give him credit on, which is you know, his NLRB has been pretty good. Standards are low, let's keep that in mind, right? But good relative to other administrations. But he has now soiled that one positive thing in his administration by stepping in and basically preventing these workers from striking to ensure that they get better working conditions and better pay. Finally, let me just tell you what happens next. We've entered another 30 day period in which the unions cannot strike. And the negotiations are ongoing. Now, if a, an agreement is not reached at the end of the 30 days, uh, then unions would be able to strike. However, there's something else to keep in mind. Uh, Congress would likely take uh, initiative there. They would intervene um, as they did in 1992. There's precedent for that. Um, so that was when the International Association of Machinists struck uh, against a single railroad, uh, CSX. And so uh, Congress stepped in and Congress and the White House moved with rare speed. They're always so fast when it comes to these issues, right? Rare speed to end a crippling 
two day nationwide, nationwide rail shutdown that already had begun to threaten the economy by forcing layoffs at coal mines and auto assembly plants. The House and Senate passed emergency legislation barring, barring strikes and lockouts by large margins, setting up a last best offer arbitration system to resolve the three major union management disputes that had idled virtually all US railroads. So the one, there's two things that I think Congress is very speedy with. Number one, defense spending, they'll pass that bill right away. And anything that allows for the crushing of workers, certainly workers who might strike. So that there you have it, that's where we're at with that railroad worker negotiation situation. And we'll fill you in as we get more details, but yeah. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.